What would happen and how would your life be different if you could control the thoughts and actions of others? This is a question that I have often pondered. And the one answer that I always come up with is that I would have become a starring lead child actor at the age of four. Get out of my way, Tom Cruise. But unfortunately, unfortunately for me, I was not the ninja of persuasion that I am today at the age of four. Some people ask me, how did you arrive where you are, are, are at, Brad? The answer I'm going to tell you is in this episode. After James hits it, so didn't up right now. Brad Johnson Show. Three, two, one. Ignition blast off. Welcome to the Brad Johnson Show. I'm Brad Johnson, and I'm turning losers like you into winners like me. The Brad Johnson Show with your host, Brad Johnson. Get ready to start winning. And now your host, Brad Johnson. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, I am Brad Johnson. It is time to release my brilliance to an admiring world. <laughs> well, here with me today is the assistant to the host, James Kirkland. With uh, my brilliance less brilliance well. there, but he's well, it's just less. Um, welcome to the Brad Johnson Show, where I'm turning losers like you into winners like me. So glad to have you here, pouring my voice into your brain cavity. <laughs> James, oh man, I'm so excited about this episode. This is one of those topics that I don't think gets covered enough, and I just I can't wait to dive into it. Yes. Yeah, this is a skill that people really should learn about that will just give them an incredible edge in every area of their lives. Well, I... I was thinking about it in the shower today and I was just like, you know, I have one of those shower thoughts, <laughs> hashtag shower thoughts. And I, it's like, you know, I'm, anytime I have a shower thought, I know it's going to be gold. Of course. It's a little moist gold. But anyway, I was thinking about, I was like, for a lot of people, uh, NLP, what we're going to be talking about today is, is something that helps them become rich. But for a lot of those people, being rich is a bit like having the shingles. Um, I mean, it doesn't happen very often. And when it does, it usually lasts about two weeks. So, um, I mean, plus you usually don't have to go to work in either case <laughs> if you're rich or if you have the shingles. Anyway, uh, with that being said, on this show, I'm going to help you salvage the wreckage of your life through my tried and true answers and NLP strategies that are guaranteed to change your life, maybe even for the better. But before we get to this amazing interview where I'm going to impart some knowledge that is just, uh, yeah, it's basically going to give you superpowers, it's time for work. From our sponsor. Ladies and gentlemen of the Brad Johnson Nation, please welcome my coach, my guru, and my friend. <laughs> I think I can say that. Dr. Lucius Clemens. Ah, Lucius. Mush. Lucy. <laughs> How's it doing? How, how, how are you doing, my man? <laughs> oh, Brad, it's so delightful to be back on the Brad Johnson Show. Um, actually, I mean, for the first time, I'm, this is definitely an honor to be able to be featured on your show. Oh, I tell me about it. And I, people feel like that all the time. They're like, oh, thanks for having me back. I'm like, well, this is your first time on. And they're like, oh, I just feel so at home here. I think when, when you're in the presence of other winners, it's just it feels like home. Yes, that's so true, Brad. And you really have created that sort of environment with your podcast. And I'm very honored to be on today. Oh, man, I bet you are. <laughs> okay, so, Lucius, Luigi, uh, recently you added doctor to uh, your title. Now, that that is a, a big step forward. Just tell me a little bit about that. Well, Brad, you know, I've, I've gone through th so many uh, training processes to get to the position that I'm at today. And um, the, the title of doctor was actually, it was just kind of a courtesy. Uh, you see, for the, mm. so much of the help that I've given uh, to millions, if not billions, of people in the world uh, from a university, I won't, I won't state it. Um, so uh, you, you know how it goes. Um, it was just a lazy Saturday afternoon, uh, nothing really better to do. Um, mm, yeah, and so I, I contacted this university and just said I should become a doctor of NLP. And hmm. they said, who are you? And I told them my name. And immediately um, they, they said, yes, of course. Um, wow. And they said, it's, you can do it all online. It, it was so easy. I just, it was very nice. quick. I just went uh, under the website. Uh, it was just seven payments of $4,999. And instantly I became a doctor of NLP. It was, it was that simple. 
Wow. <laughs> Lucius, you know, man, that that is just so such an inspiring story because I feel like that's the the type of 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 practical down to earth step by step sort of process that like anybody could follow, super easy, and then boom, like they're suddenly uh, a doctor of NLP. So, uh now you are the guy who's helped me really max out when it comes to NLP, and it's just amazing, life-changing. Yes. Um you also introduced me to Moroccan dental floss, and that what a world changer. Yes, yes, that's just that's something that more people should know about. Um, it's it's just an undiscovered treasure uh, of an innovation that's been uh, it's new to us, but not uh, to the Moroccans. They've been using it for centuries, and yeah, um, yeah it's 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 completely revolutionary uh, to those of us who've who've used to using this this fake waxed garbage. Uh, uh, they use a much disgusting. more natural approach, and it's, it's just so much better for you. Yeah, we. I mean, we could do a whole episode about Moroccan dental floss. I just want to. I just want to throw that out there, though, just to kind of give the people an idea of who you are and the kind of things you're into and the kind of life changing things that you do to other people. Which, uh, man, right there. Uh, okay, so, man, so um, where to start? Where to start? NLP. This is a huge thing. Uh, why did you? Uh, for for those who who aren't sure what we're talking about here, they're like, what what NLP is? That the national uh, lip people or not, you know whatever some a loser would think. Uh, tell the people though what NLP is, just in a, in a layman's terms. That is an excellent question, and we really should establish that moving forward. Uh, so NLP stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming. So that is a very, very large scientific word that most people won't understand. And if you don't understand that right off, right off the bat, you need to just, you just need to go find something else to do but still listen to this um so it's it's a uh, it's a form of communication uh that is powerful in being able to change how we experience the world um because mm. our thoughts and feelings shape our reality um and so these techniques that we're about to talk about can transform your entire life and the lives of other people without them even knowing it or consenting to it. Oh, man. <laughs> now, that is the kind of uh, hidden talent, hidden skill that can really take you to the next level. And that's why I had to have you on, Lucius, so we could talk about this. Now, just talk to me. You've been you've been in this field for quite a while now, uh, over a year now almost. And I, I just what are what are some differences that you've seen uh, between like a year ago versus today in the NLP world? Well, forms of communication have developed so far uh, in the past even 10 years that Nowadays, NLP techniques um, have just, they've changed in such dramatic ways. It's, it's really astonishing. For example, social media, it's, it's one of the most effective ways that you can use these techniques because people are so uh, ready to believe anything that they read online. And so mm. you could use those NLP techniques in brand new ways that never would have been imagined in the past. Wow. <laughs> I love this. Yeah. So the internet is just opening up more possibilities that you can use with NLP. Okay. So what is the biggest mistake though, that you see that people making using NLP? Is it like, I mean, cause there's, <laughs> it's become more of a, a mainstream type of thing. Like we were totally on this before it was, and it was very, you know, counterculture for us to be on that. But now people have kind of adopted it and gotten on the bandwagon. And uh, <laughs> I, I call it more of like a, a band Tesla. Um, anyway, uh, so as, as people are doing this, they, they get the, the hacky stuff off the internet and it's really just bad information. I mean, you got those, those people uh, trying to talk like they know about NLP and stuff like uh, Tony uh, Robbins or whatever his name is and people oh, like yes. that. So, uh, but what are some of the mistakes that you see? Probably the biggest mistake I've seen is people's lack of realization that they can use NLP techniques, uh, to have other people give them money. Uh, because this all comes down to the financial aspect. This is to mm. prosper you as a person. It's to be able to give you an advantage or a leg up financially on people. So if you're not using NLP uh, to take other people's money from them without them realizing it, then you're doing it for all the wrong reasons. Mm. I, I love that word to prosper. I think uh, I think that is a, a good term to be using for winners like us who are doing things it's just we're just prospering it's like man this is yes. easy I and mean, why don't more people do it and obviously the answer is because you know they're they're losers and we gotta we gotta help them with that and i think one of the 
I mean, I, this personal struggle here, something that I've really, you know, just had to deal with in my life is just like, man, there's so many losers out there don't know they're losers and they don't want to change. And it's like, man, if you could just like, let me just squish you like some Play-Doh and make you something that you're not like that, man, your life would be so much better. And using these NLP techniques, I'm, I'm getting people to change without them even knowing that I'm doing that. Exactly. And that's the best way that you can help someone in without them realizing it is by helping them become more of a winner by helping you become a winner. All right. <laughs> so, Lush, Lushi, we got to get into these top NLP techniques that are going to transform somebody's life because, I mean, what is the Brad Johnson show if it's not practical, concrete, hard, uh, stone-like, granite-like things that are hard that talk about uh, helping people figure stuff out. So, it, we're nothing if we're not that. Anyway, that all that to say that we are going to cover these top five techniques. So let us start with number one, which is disassociation or just dissociation. So I, I yes. don't know. I've heard I've heard people use both ones. I think the one with the A, like more letters, makes it definitely more impactful. But uh, right. I, I, I'd like you to speak to that. But just tell, tell people what is dissociation or disassociation. This is where you basically are dislocating your your soul from your body in an mm. uncomfortable situation. Um, that's mm. why it's so similar to the word dislocation, disassociation, uh, because you're yes. taking um, your soul and your mind and you're floating outside of your body in an uncomfortable situation. Mm. And you're just escaping. You're going on onto oh, autopilot and going somewhere yes. else. Oh man, that is such an unstoppable technique. I've used this. I've used this so many times since since we had our first little conference. This is one of the first techniques you taught me, and man, it's just world changer. I mean, there was that one time <laughs> we were, like after the training session, we were at the uh, sushi restaurant, and we were just hanging out there having some some uh, calamari and some more other sushi dishes. Uh, very fancy, very high dollar place, and uh, yeah, I <laughs> oh, this is the worst. I, I didn't realize that I'd. Um, I'd taken a bite of straight up wasabi instead of the actual sushi piece. I kind of got it mixed up. Anyway, um, similar colors. So it was a, an honest mistake. Anyway, I was just like, what do I do? Like, this is my mouth is on fire, but I'm like in the presence of all these like fancy people in this fancy restaurant. Like, I don't want to just like explode and like start spitting things out of my mouth. So I just, I just turn on the disassociation and boom, like I didn't even feel the pain. I just knew it was there and I like held it in my mouth and yeah. That's fantastic. And yes, that's, that's an excellent example. Um, another, another thing I would say uh, in relation to this, one of my favorite techniques um, when disassociating is to imagine myself leaving my body in the room that I'm in and going out onto a golf course because you know that's where all the best business deals happen. And my imagination takes me there and I imagine the other person that's in the room that I'm trying to convince also shows up and I make the deal on the golf course and then come back. And it just gives me such an amazing confidence boost. Yeah, no, that, that is that is fantastic. And just, just the whole idea of just looking at yourself like you're looking at yourself, you know, and then like it's exactly. an out-of-body experience. And you're just observing what's going on in your own heart, your own mind, your own, you know, taste buds, your mouth and feeling the wasabi just burn through your nasal passages, things like that. And then like take it even a step further and look at yourself looking at yourself and then look at yourself looking at yourself looking at yourself. I mean, before you know it, you don't even yes. know if you're looking. It's like one of those mirror things. It's like the mirror is looking at the mirror and you're like, who am I? Exactly. And you don't even know anymore. Yes. It, yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> really, those identity crises can open up an entire different, entirely different way of thinking that you may have never come across if you hadn't had an out-of-body experience. So powerful. Such powerful te technique. Love it. Okay, let's let's run through these. We got a we got a lot to cover. So number two is content reframing. Now, uh, contrary to what most people would probably think, and I definitely didn't think this when you first first said that, but I thought you were talking about like taking some of my social media posts and putting them in different frames from the frames that they are in right now, which is not what we're talking about here. Not at all. No, the content reframing is all about taking your situation and choosing to see it the way you want it to be. Oftentimes, there are circumstances we can't avoid in our lives. And so this way, you will still be able to have control uh, in your own way for example hmm. uh, i had a i had a situation where 
Uh, I was I was getting onto an airplane, of course, going first class, of and <laughs> I was I was doing it because I was traveling with a friend of mine. Uh, it's the only reason I wasn't on my private jet. Uh, and so we were getting onto this airplane, and they told me uh, that they had accidentally double booked, and that I would be able to that I would have to wait for the next flight. And oh. I told them that I would not do that. So I went back into the airplane. And I handed the pilot uh, $5 million in cash on the spot and told him to get out of the wow. seat. And I reframed that situation where they said I couldn't have the first class seat. And I purchased an even better one and flew the plane all the way to San Francisco. That wow. is content reframing. You're taking a bad situation, flipping it on its head, turning it around to a different angle that's advantageous to you and just astounds those that are watching. Yeah, no kidding, man. <laughs> and that was that was the exact same technique that I used uh, you, several a uh, couple months ago. You know, you probably heard about the whole winning liquefied. We had a, a slight issue with some of the packaging, and it kind of like spilled across the road and ran a couple cars off, and uh, kind of flooded a couple fields. Um, it was it was a bit of a mess, but using your technique after I learned this, I was like, boom, like this is not that hard. I just, I just reframed the content. And just like that, I was charging that farmer uh, for irrigating his fields. So <laughs> yeah, things like that. You just, you, you take a, a bad situation, you make it so much better and it just, it's easy. That's another perfect example. Thank you for sharing that. Oh yeah, it was really good of me to do that. All right, so let's look at technique number three, which is anchoring yourself. Now, this one right here, I, I feel like I do at the gym every day because I'm always like slugging around those giant weights and stuff. I'm kind of anchored to one spot because I got so much weight on my body, but that's different from what we're talking about here. Yes, so anchoring yourself was um, is connected to the Pavlovian experiments where they would ring a bell and the dogs would begin to salivate, thinking that they were about to be fed. And the way I've conditioned myself in this way is by developing my own Pavlovian effects for myself. Now, wasn't he? He also put out a punk album. I'm pretty sure. I believe that's a different Swedish band. I'm sorry. I think this okay. is the Russian right. scientist we're talking about. Okay. Well, I think the the band was Russian, and yeah, it was. It was, yeah, there were a lot of bells in, in the album, I'm pretty sure. Anyway, sorry, uh, go ahead. So what I've done is I've, I've identified situations where I need uh, the ability to, to stimulate positive response and a positive um, reaction in my own self when no one else is able to do it for me. For example, mm -hmm. uh, I oftentimes, in a business meeting, I will be sitting there and the negotiations are going against me. Uh, things aren't going well. Um, my end of the, the deal is not what I want it to be. If I'm buying a business, they're not giving me the percentages that I'm asking for. Mm, the best the solution that I have is to bring in this giant bell that I have. It's on a cart. And they bring it in mm. and I take this, this hammer and I start ringing the bell as fast and as hard as I can until the people inside of that negotiation room concede and give me everything that I want. So wow. it's not so much about uh, the the psychological effects as it is about the bell itself, uh, where you can mm. just, you can use that bell to manipulate people uh, into giving you what you want. Okay, so you're, you're, you're programming their neuro and linguistic side of their life and self with a bell that makes perfect sense exactly. i i gotta share just a little example too of when you taught me this like the whole anchoring thing like and and putting it like so if it's not a bell like you actually you do something over and over while you're doing something like um well I, the, the best the most effective one that you taught me was was to uh like put some tooth pressure on my big toe and so as soon as like when i yes. so I, and i started associating that over and over and over with the feeling of confidence. So every time I put that tooth pressure yes. on my big toe, like boom, I just had this surge of confidence. Like it's a, it is incredible. So, I mean, anytime I'm at a business meeting now and I'm just, you know, feeling a little backed into a corner or what, whatever's going on, like if it's some kind of, you know, tense personal interaction or, you know, maybe, uh, you know, getting those digits or something like that. All I have to do is just put that tooth pressure down on my big toe and boom, like the confidence just comes like pouring out of me. 
It's fantastic, and that's exactly how it's supposed to be done. Yeah, <laughs> so good. You can use that technique anytime you need to change your mind. It's just it's just that that anchoring. So you got to put in the work first. Like it's it's not easy. Yes, you have to develop that that response where you understand when I do this, this is what's going to happen. For my, in my yeah, case, well, and for me, in my case, it's ringing the bell. Was- in your case, it's it's that t- that t- pressure from your teeth, uh, and it incites that reaction emotionally. Yeah, but for me, like the the work really was the the flexibility involved in making that that happen. So uh, anyway, okay, so that's number three is anchoring. Do it, people. It's worth the effort, especially like I mean, just the the the, fl- the general flexibility that I have now, at least in my in my right leg, is is incredible. So this is tip number four is getting other people to like you. So this is one of those NLP techniques that I didn't even know was an NLP technique. I just thought I was naturally gifted, and then you came along. And you're like, no, you're you you, well, you are, but then you were also so like this is this is rapport this right. and i was like that's report and that is what a gun does when it goes off but you told me that it's actually french yes and, and that's correct the the linguistics aspect of that is very important um but also like you said being a natural at something does apply in this situation so in in our case uh, of you and you and i brad getting other people to like us is a completely natural thing uh, anytime we meet someone for the first time, we have one opportunity to decide if they like us or not. If they do, you should continue the relationship and continue talking to them because you have established report with them and they've established report with you. If you introduce yourself and they don't like you immediately, they don't deserve to have you in their company and you must walk away immediately. Mm-hmm. People oftentimes yeah. think that if you can't get someone to like you immediately, that it's your fault and you did something wrong. That is completely inaccurate. If they don't like you initially, it's their fault and you should completely write the situation off and forget about it because they don't matter. Well, there's like we say, there's there's no second time to get a first chance at a the uh, first impression that somebody has of you. So and that's this whole this whole gaining that rapport. The technique you taught me with mirroring <laughs> that has just been wow, like brain blowing. Yes. Um, doing the mirroring is, is so helpful. Um, whenever you're first introducing yourself to someone, it's, it's, not, it's not matching the, the poses or anything like that. Their hand motions, that's, that's ridiculous. <laughs> Get that out of your head. Yeah. Mirroring is where you actually carry around a hand mirror. And whenever you introduce yourself, you hold up the mirror to, next to your face so they see themselves next to you and they immediately identify themselves as your friend and that wow. they can trust you implicitly and they'll probably want to give you money. Well, and I can tell from firsthand experience that this works, okay, people? This is this is a new generation of NLP. I think some of the older school guys are like telling you something different. Forget that. This is what works. So bring the hand mirror. You got to have it. And then, the, man, I just got to bow down, Lucius, here. Uh, this was one of those tips that you gave me that really took this mirroring concept to the next level, was just uh, was doing some some espionage beforehand finding out what they're wearing and wearing you know, something basically identical and then you put the hand mirror above your face and then they see you, their face and then they see their clothes as well exactly yes and things do get a little more complicated um if you're a man and they're a woman and they're wearing a dress or something uh, that can get a little bit awkward and put people off but hopefully they'll appreciate the effort that you put in and they'll just be so receptive uh, to how much um how much meaning you put into your communication with them that they'll just accept it. Well, and especially when they see their clothes on a much better body, I think it, it kind of also provides some hope that they don't have to, you know, remain where they are. Okay, so now we are on to tip number five. This is this is, this is the thing that you can accomplish with NLP that every, this is the, this is the holy grail. <laughs> uh, yeah, right here. Number five, influence and persuasion. This is what we're all looking for. Like, okay, how do I close the deal? How do I get more money? How do I get this guy to give me a, a discount on my next Lamborghini? All this comes down to influence exactly. and persuasion, which is what NLP is all about. Exactly. And you must understand that those two are code words for manipulation and hypnosis. Those are the two methods of creating influence and having persuasion. You have to understand how to manipulate people and you have to know how to hypnotize them. If you can do those two things, you'll be completely unstoppable and you'll be able to do completely ridiculous things that no one would ever imagine possible. 
Wow, <laughs> this is so good. Man, having you, Lucius, as my mentor with NLP is just absolutely incredible. Uh, this is a, a skill set that I didn't even know I needed, uh, but once I found it, that I didn't have it, <laughs> dang, if I ever d needed it, and I did. So that's why I got it. And uh, yeah, so people, I'm telling you, Lucius is one of the best coaches out there as far as NLP. Go check out his stuff. Make sure that you get trained in NLP because you need it. Yeah, <laughs> you need it. You really do believe me they really all do. right so thank yeah thanks lucius for coming on this this was a great interview i think we packed into value thank you so much brad appreciate being able to share thanks for listening to the brad johnson show where every episode we bring you tips tricks interviews advice and answers to fix the mess that is your life while helping you stop being a loser and start winning in business health and your personal life show us your face tweet us your tweets and insta your grams at brad johnson show the Brad Johnson Show. Winners only.